Okay, so in this video, we're going to simulate our power amplifier that we had designed in the last video. So let's open a schematic. You can just make it a generic schematic for the time being. And we're going to go to that design guide amplifier. And last time we had looked at a load pole. This time we're going to look at this one. It's called under class B spectrum gain, harmonic distortion, and PAE versus power. What this is going to enable us to do is to sweep the input power at a given frequency and find out some things about the characteristic of the output power as a function of the input power. Okay, we've now opened up the schematic. the test bench and here's what it looks like. Now you can see that they have a generic class B amplifier in their schematic. We're going to delete their amplifier and we're going to replace it with our amplifier. So if we go to insert component, component libraries, it'll pull up a menu. And in our workspace libraries, we can go find the amplifier that we had designed earlier. Uh, I named mine Class B Power Amplifier. And I'm going to put this one in the schematic. Okay. Now we just need to connect the amplifier up. So I'm going to put the amplifier right here. You can wire the input into the input terminal, the output into the output terminal. And then this VS low is the bias voltage for the gate of the transistor. And VS high is the bias voltage for the drain of the transistor. Now, of course, we can clean the schematic up. We can move the wires around so they make more sense if we'd like to. Of course, you don't have to as long as they're making connections. Uh, but it can be kind of difficult to understand what's going on in a schematic if it's not disorganized. Now, V high, in our case, we're using a 50 volt transistor for the, so that's the drain voltage. And we can leave V low at minus two and a half volts for the moment. That's actually the voltage that we did the load pull at uh, when we designed the amplifier. So zooming back out, if we poke into the amplifier, we'll see that this is the amplifier that we had designed. Now this one has an ideal matching network uh, in it. And I, uh, I I made a few labels. So I put a current probe in and I labeled the current probe ID underscore FET1. And I labeled the drain node of the transistor VD underscore FET1, uh, all capital letters. Uh, and the reason for that uh, will be clear in a moment. Uh, but uh, for the time being, this is what our power amplifier looks like. We just have uh, two uh, single stub matches and we are AC coupled uh, at the uh, input and output we allow our DC to pass through our matching network. So let's poke back up to the top and look at the simulation setup a bit more. So they're using a harmonic balance simulation and a harmonic balance simulation is a frequency domain simulation where you put in multiple tones at the input um, one or multiple tones of the input, and then you monitor the output for harmonic tones and distortion-based tones, and you solve KVL and KCL uh, for the uh, for all the nodes in the circuit uh, at the uh, at those different frequencies and at the different nodes in the circuit, and in the end you come up with uh, the harmonic balance solution. Now, the harmonic balance solution is going to be done in this case at a single frequency. We're going to, uh, to do this at 850 megahertz. Uh, and we're going to look at 15 harmonics from the harmonic balance simulation. And we've set our power source up so that it is sweepable. We first, we do this by initializing a variable for the input power. So here's our variable RF power, and we initialize it to say 10 dBm. Then we 
can set up the sweep to sweep RF power and we can use a sweep plan called sweep one, which is right here. And this sweep plan, uh, we have two different uh, sweeps that set. We have one going from 10 to 15 dBm in steps of five. I'm gonna widen the range on this a little bit more. We're gonna go from zero to 15 dBm in steps of five dB. And once we get to 15 dBm, we start with a higher resolution sweep. Uh, so we're going from 15 uh, dBm or 16 dBm to 26 dBm in steps of one dB. And this will allow us to see compression uh, a bit better. I'm gonna widen this range a little bit too, up to 30. And we can click okay. Now, other things in this simulation, the simulation is set up so that we can measure the, uh, it's set up with uh, different impedances at uh, different harmonics uh, for the uh, load impedance and for the source impedance. Uh, and it is uh, set up to be able to monitor the uh, input and output uh, impedances. All right, so we're ready to run the simulation. Oh, one, one additional thing, they do have some calculations uh, that are being done here. Uh, of the various power levels in the circuit. So we have the power delivered to the load uh, in watts and in dBm. We have the DC power consumption being calculated, the input power in watts being calculated, the power added efficiency, and also the gain. All right, so we're ready to run. We can go ahead and save the schematic and click the sprocket up here in order to start the simulation. Simulation is running and it's complete. So it should open up one of these display windows once it's complete. And the display window, the first thing you see is a page full of equations that are doing calculations for the various quantities that we care about in the circuit. So for instance, calculating the power delivered to the load, uh, looking at the spectral content, power of the fundamental and power of the third harmonic uh, as a couple of examples. And the other thing, you know, the other things in here, uh, calculating the AM to AM distortion and AM to PM distortion uh, of the amplifier. And then there's some other things in here related to doing some interpolations so that we can interpolate between points. Now, here we look at the results of the simulation. You can see that we can choose our desired output power by sliding this marker along the line here. So for instance, if we wanted to have an output power of 33 dBm, we'd move the marker somewhere close to 33 dBm, and then the interpolator would calculate, would make all the calculations. You can see that indeed uh, the interpolation did uh, find something near 33 dBm. Uh, it found that we're nearing compression. In fact, the gain is, uh, the gain uh, is about 1 dB uh, at this point, so not very big. Uh, of course, we're operating near saturation. Uh, you can also see the efficiency is about 3% at this particular point. And we can also look at the waveforms, so you can see the uh, input and output voltage waveforms and the drain current uh, and drain voltage uh, waveforms for the transistor. And you can see that we're more or less operating in what looks like a class A, maybe a, a class A mode where the drain current, uh, which is the, the red waveform here, uh, is more or less sinusoidal. And that's why our efficiency is fairly low. Now, you can also see uh, that the spectrum is plotted up here. So you can see all the spectral component. These are the harmonic contents uh, uh, of the amplifier. You can see that the biggest one is at the fundamental frequency, 850 megahertz. And we also have a strong second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, and so on and so forth. And you can also see the PAE. This is the point, uh, this black dot here is the point that's being put into the table up above. And you can see the curve for the PAE is a function of power. You can see the third harmonic is a function of power and the first harmonic is a function of power and how we might 
calculate the point where these two intercept at some point. You can also look at the performance at different compression levels. So for instance, we could change the gain compression to a higher level of gain compression if we wanted to operate closer to saturation. We could move that to 2 dBs. Uh, and then we went back and looked at some of these plots. They've changed a little bit. All right, so uh, that's how the simulation operates. Now in the next uh, video that we do, I'm going to replace the ideal transmission lines with real transmission lines. Uh, and then we're going to uh, run a simulation that shows the full performance of this particular power amplifier. Uh, but for the time being, we'll go ahead and stop there. And uh, hopefully uh, you're having fun learning how to run some simulations in ADS.